We have a problem today in the United States. Uh, we know that about one in five Americans at any given time are dealing with a mental health condition, and yet only half of them get treatment, even fewer get evidence-based treatment. And part of the reason for that is that we don't have enough trained mental health providers, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, uh, marriage and family therapists, and we're not filling the pipeline enough to deal with the needs that we know are coming in the future. The crisis is due to the fact that we lack the human resources we need to actually implement the system that's coming as a result of insurance parity and insurance coverage. We have a huge challenge of paradigm. We have a huge challenge of funding. And even in the current mental health workforce paradigm, we have huge issues of training and, and funding. We have entire rural areas that don't have this traditional worker the psychiatrists and psychologists that are needed as well. There probably has never been a time that it's more critical to address mental health and workforce shortages than now. And it is so much a reflection of the time that we live in, the sheer increase in the visibility of mental health issues. The imperative for dealing with this now is much greater than it's ever been. There are solutions to this healthcare crisis, and they run the gamut from policy changes to really community involvement. And we just had a panel where they talked about the role of faith leaders, of peers, people with lived experience in dealing with mental problems, mental illnesses, um, and really how community health workers also can be involved and be helpful. I'd like to see policies like loan forgiveness for mental health professionals across the spectrum so that they can say, you know what, I'm interested in this field and I think that I can earn a decent living, have a place to live, have a family if I go into this field. If they're looking at crushing debt burdens, that can be a difficult choice and we'd like to make that an easier choice. In order to scale these solutions, we need to have funding. We need to have the college and training programs that can help people move through those trainings in a very quick fashion. And then we need ongoing education for those who want to go and are willing to go further into their education. My one biggest hope for what people leave with today is feeling inspired that there are actually solutions. And I know I leave inspired by the diversity of the kind of work that people are doing and how many different voices are present.